Please join me in welcoming my good friend, our hero. He's a genius, Dr. Dan Von Hoff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Derek, for that honor. And thank you for the ovation. And Roger, I don't think you're feeding us enough. <laughs> it's been quite a weekend so far. We thank you very much. Uh, I have a little different title tonight uh, for this presentation. I'm going to call it Snakes and Zebrafish. Uh, which is applying the best science that we have against pancreas cancer as soon as we can. Now, Roger gives in specific instructions, as uh, Derek knows. Uh, be here, he said. Well, I wouldn't miss this. We wouldn't miss it. Because we want to give you our profound thanks. No question about that. But whatever you do, limit your comments to 15 minutes. <laughs> Actually, I think he said 20, so whatever. Uh, well, everyone here tonight has exactly the same mission, to cure pancreas cancer by finding new therapies for those who have it, early detection, and even prevention. That's our goal. But it remains a formidable enemy, as Derek said. It's the third leading cause of death. But you know, when you really think of it, it's because cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, even lung cancer, those are starting to be conquered actually really re dramatic improvements in survival. That's why pancreas cancer is getting uh, the number two pretty soon. And it's because if you can do things for those really tough ones, if you put enough resources into it and thinking, you can actually take out pancreas cancer too. So it's an important thing to remember that things are improving and we're just starting to see the use of these new therapies. Their full impact is not yet known. More important than statistics, many people will recognize some of the faces here of individuals we've lost, so we always think about the individual and treatment of the individual person. And we know also that pancreas cancer is hidden in the back of our abdomen, so it's very, very difficult to detect. If I can get it on here. Oh, it's very difficult to detect, and it's detected very late. This is what it looks like on CAT scan. We put. Uh, picture uh, pixels around it and you can see the liver there and there, the fluid level in the stomach as we're eating and that's the pancreas cancer sitting right there. Hard to detect, very silent area. Now please get the word out though that you can survive this disease. These are the five years and the five year survival was last looked at in 2011. Those are the official statistics. This is 2017 so there's a lag period. You can see here when it's localized to the pancreas it's 32% live five years. If it's regional, meaning around the pancreas, it's 12%. So it's getting better, but still. And if it's advanced metastatic outside the pancreas, it's two to 8%. So there's been a little progress, but not nearly fast enough. But from this slide, there's one important lesson. There is no such thing as early pancreatic cancer. Even though you think it's early, it's like everybody knew breast cancer, so oh, we got it early because it was a small lump and then the person was dead two years later. But what's changed is we've recognized there's no such thing as early disease. We must use therapies for advanced disease against early disease, and if you do that before the resistance develops, that's how you improve the cure rate. So anything we're gonna talk about tonight in advanced disease applied earlier is likely to have much more dramatic effects. So it's bad. Uh, but some people's docs say, not even worth trying. That's a mistake. We must get the message out that there are things worth trying. Now, the Magawis Golf Classic has supported the development of multiple new therapies. This has always been based, that's the emphasis tonight, on science. It's always based on science. So let's review the science we've used to exploit these vulnerabilities of this tumor. I've done here, I usually make bigger slides, but uh, this one, before the Cena Magowitz Classic, what we did is we grew the cells in culture, right? And you can see here, this was control, which lots of cancer colonies, and then the drug exposed, fewer colonies. 
Then we had the Cena One Golf Classic, and I'm sure Roger and others remember, we said the pancreas cancer is surrounded by scar because there's a lot of inflammation. Pancreas is a bag of enzymes, and a Braxane might attack that scar. And you can see here the scar in the white arrows, and the tumors are not too many. It's actually a lot of scar. The Cena number two golf classic trial was the French had described a new regimen called Fulfirinox. So we said if they describe that, we've got this, put them together and see what you can do. We'll get to the results in a minute. Then Cena three, we started doing molecular profiling at TGen, showing trouble repairing the DNA. These they get damaged and they have trouble repairing it, so they're kind of out on a limb. So we said let's add the drug that cured, cis, uh, cured Lance Armstrong, cisplatinum all based on science. And then the mattress firm and CNF4 Golf Classic got in and we said, you know, high dose synthetic vitamin D can change the tumor microenvironment. We keep thinking it's the cancer that's causing the problem, but it's actually the surrounding that actually supports the growth. That was a, that was a difference. And finally, Sumer, uh, Tina 5 was tumors are out on a limb. We don't realize how nutritionally starved they are. They're way out on a limb. And if we could just increase the free radical, everybody's trying to decrease it, but if you could increase the free radical damage by giving extremely high doses of vitamin C, for example, maybe we could actually bump those cells off that are just out on a limb. And I put next, next, next. Now we've tried, and this is always by getting up to a board every year to report, which many people have that experience, because we want to have progress. And we've tried to apply these things as rapidly as possible. So on this slide represents, Roger, all 14 years of this tournament. And I usually don't put everything on one slide, but I thought it would be important, and I've taken the important parameters, which are one-year survivorship and two-year survivorship. Since the Cena Magowitz started, historically, with the drug 5-FU, only 2%. This is all metastatic patients with metastatic, only 2% survived one year. Nobody survived two years. Historically, we also did gemcitabine. Then we got it up to 18%, no two-year survivors. And then Cena one came along with 66 patients. And that was 48%, almost half the people lived year. And for the first time in history, we had reports now of people living two years. Fulfirinox came along. <laughs> and beyond. Then the French reported Fulfirinox. They said they had 42%. This is great. 15% two-year survival for this, and, and beyond, by the way. And we, so we put those two together, as I said, and we got the Abraxane gem. Uh, I'm sorry, excuse me. And we then did an international trial because some people said, well, Dan, if you have 66, no, that's not good enough. Uh, to get that drug approved, you had to put it together in an 861 patient trial, 846 here is that uh, now the response rate, one year survivorship was a little lower because it's in many different doctors' hands, many different patients taking it, but an international trial and 9%. Then Cena 2 came along where we added that Fulfirinox on and that was the best response rate yet, 54% and 14% uh, two year survivorship. Then we added on for the repair, as I mentioned, uh, Abraxane gem cisplatinum and at a 65% one-year survival, and we'll show uh, DeGail Jameson here in a minute, is that it's too early for two-year survivorship because you just got these results, but 65% now. And then we put on with the mattress firm and the Cena 4 help, uh, Abraxane, Gem, Platinum, Vitamin D, and Nivolumab. And uh, I'm gonna call on ERCUT. How We've treated what, 14 patients? Yeah, 12 out of 14 uh, responding. That's very dramatic, too early to report yet. And with the dollars also, we started the other trial uh, raised from last year, Abraxane, Gem, Platinum, and good old high, high dose vitamin C, ascorbic acid. And that's too early to talk about. But I want to tell you that one of the survivors here tonight, I don't know if you can see this, but she started early with a little Tropicana going IV here. <laughs> You'll hear from Jill here in a few minutes. That's not real, by the way. That's, it's real Tropicana, but it's not what we use. So the summary of support from this tournament has been that patients with stage four metastatic disease, the percent of patients with major tumor shrinkage, that would be people in pain, people who have obstruction, 
and perhaps operable. When we started with gemcitabine, it was 5%. But with Cena 3, now it's 71%. A three to four-fold improvement in one-year survivorship, and as you'll see, for the first time, two-year, three-year, four-year, five-year survivors. So we're very appreciative of the support that made it happen. This is, I know, extremely hard work to raise these dollars. I wish I could put everybody's picture on, but uh, there's been an awful lot of people in this room that have bonded over the years. We have a lot of super, super people in so many ways. And uh, there's some more. Wonder Woman. So I hope you can see you're really making an incredible difference. Incredible. Now, who's the medical team that's behind this? Uh, ben, we have these, we have small but wiry, Gail Jamison, Urquhart, that's our whole phase one clinical team, Ramesh Ramanathan, who's now at the Mayo, Derek Kreidbring, uh, Ron Korn, who reads all the x-rays. So uh, it's, they're terrific colleagues, and I wouldn't be standing up here talking about this without them, and everybody in the room knows them. <laughs> Urquhart. Stand up. Why don't you stand up? Because you do a lot of work. <laughs> Gail. Let's see. And we're also very glad that uh, Derek is back because he was in Iraq fighting for our freedom. So we're so glad to have him back. He's a neurobiologist who went into the reserves and got drafted out for a while. Glad to have you back alive. Now, people say, well, gee, if we can't get approval based on the 66, how many do you have to have? And here we are. We do go, go out and try to get pharma support because to do a trial of 842 or 861 patients, you need to have around $120 million that has to be raised to do this. And we're very proud because right in this, uh, right with the Cena dollars and this tournament, all of these countries participated in this clinical trial, 151 different sites uh, enrolled, as you can see here. So if you get something promising in a pilot work done with this support, then you have something to go out there and get other people interested in helping support. But if we don't have this pilot information, we have no chance. The full impact of Cena one which is just the Abraxane plus GEM, has not yet been felt but I want you to stay tuned because in a few months we're gonna know more. Using this first regimen, you actually can get more people to surgery. In fact, for the first 25 that have been tried, who you couldn't operate on, 20 you could now get to surgery. The other big trial that's 1,100 patients all over the world is to try to do surgery. In, you do the surgery for operable patients, but you saw from the statistics, even though you think it's early, it still comes back. So then what you do after the surgery is important. So now there's two, there's a major trial that's just finished with a Braxane plus GEM, Cena one versus what has been the standard of care, gemcitabine alone. And Margaret Tempero from UC San Francisco is the principal investigator. And the end point for this is overall survival. And we're hoping that very early in the next year we'll have this result. This will have, if this improves survival after surgery, getting all those metastases you don't know about, this will really be a profound effect from Cena one Now to put this in perspective, we've done this once before. How many other clinical trials have been done out there for patients with pancreas cancer? Big trials, 800 patient trials that actually worked and improved survival. So here we go, gem trametinib, no, no. No, 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 yes. That's the first one we did with GM5FU. No, no. No, 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 yes. That was the French trial I talked about. No, 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 no. No, 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 yes. This represents 18,000 patients, but that yes was an improvement of seven days. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Yes, a Braxane gem, Cena one. No. Yes, this is one that we did with Stand Up to Cancer, and it improved survivorship. 
and some of the people who did that are in the room here. No, 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 no. Incredible that only, if you go back one for the bottom line, just back one for me, please. Only four out of 43, three of them came from this room that are positive. Now, you know, what's the difference? Well, when you're desperate, you try things, but uh, it's not the way to go. The best way to go here is the science. And I have one other piece of late-breaking news here is that this is tumor of the biliary tree, okay? Because you say, well, you learn something about one tumor type, maybe it's something else. This is a really bad cancer, biliary cancer, gallbladder, uh, gallbladder ducts, and you see a picture here. But the Tijin triple, the one that Gail has been working on here with Cena 3 with the platinum on there, 60 patients treated worldwide, response rate 32%, used to be 2 3%, and the disease control rate, and the one year survivorship has gone from the 26% to 67%. This is, by the way, the number one cause of death. Yeah. This is a number one cause of death from cancer in Singapore and much of uh, Southeast Asia, and even can take unresectable. You can see how tough this would be to take this out. So lots of times you do something in one area, it really cross-fertilizes into another area. Again, tremendous impact from people in this room. But now we need really to take our effort to the next level and do it fast. The new science, that always works. And the new science is coming fast and furious, so it has to be applied fast and furious. And the faster we go, the fewer, fewer people are gonna die from it. And you'll, you'll note that when you do the good science and you apply it, you're gonna get those positive trials. So here's the ideas we've had over the years that many people, so Cena won, and then we found the results, and we went to two, and then we went to three, and then we went to mattress firm four. But this has taken us 14 years, right? when you look at it objectively. 15 golf tournaments count today. So we really need a change in strategy, I think. I can't keep setting up the same batters, I guess. And uh, we need to do multiple trials at once with the minimal amount of bureaucracy. So here's the strategy we're proposing tonight call it the final assault. So let's try to do multiple trials now of the best possible ideas, because there are a lot of good ones right now, all at once. The best ideas, quick hitting trials, we're going after 100% of patients responding, with 50% having complete disappearance. We know, and there's docs in the room here, that if we can get a complete disappearance of the tumor, you will have a profound effect and a chance to cure. No question about it. That's what happened in other tumor types. So the general design for this would be start all the studies at one time, testing the most important ideas. I'll briefly say that you'll hear about an anti-snake leg approach. That's a big idea. Uh, an anti-inflammatory agent. Uh, does decreasing the source of amino acids starve this tumor? Is chemotherapy plus these new immune therapies you hear about? And does an inhibitor that works in zebrafish, can we do that in people? So we want to have easier access. We want each one of these trials to be done at a single institution so we don't have the mess of uh, attorneys having to make agreements about who owns what, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see we've got a few signed up here uh, to be the six. So we can minimize the cost and bureaucracy. These are 10 patient trials. If it's working 100%, we go to 25. So we're looking for big improvements, as I've just said. And we've got to try to do the big ideas. We're gonna learn more because we have talented teams, many people making this, and a central database for neural network learning and central processing of specimens. Uh, so we have more efficiency. Now I wanna tell you that this actually has worked by something that happened at this tournament, which we were put together with Frank Grange, Tim Jones and Ray, and uh, great friends over the years, and our team members were Tim and Ray and Vince, and uh, Hyung and Urquhart, Rich Posner, Mike Barrett, from many places to utilize the information we got and do data, big learning on big data. And I'll just tell you that everybody is really proud because this just was published, called the Frank Grange Project in his memory. And uh, this is exciting because it gave us a new target in pancreas cancer called MYC, M-Y-C. And this helped us obtain funding at the tune of $12 million to do the basic work to try to see what these ideas are good. And it comes from Stand Up to Cancer, Lust Garden, and the majority comes from Cancer Research UK. 
And you might ask, why would they give the money here? Well, we're glad they did because they feel that their teams are not moving ahead enough, fast enough. And if you don't know Cancer Research UK, they raise all their money basically with goodwill shops in the UK, $180 million a year. Yeah, amazing. So we put together a team, 80% US, 20% UK, and you can see here, it's called Programming Transcriptional Circuitry to Control Pancreas Cancer. We put the flags in, because they were given the most money, right? And you can see here that it's an incredible team. We have three probably Nobel laureates that are future Nobel laureates, and it's Tejan and the SOC and Bart's Cancer, University of Cambridge, Penn, Princeton, UC San Diego. It's a great team. So what are we looking at? Well, we know these tumor cells talk to other cells all at the same time. We know these other cells talk to the tumor cells. This is complicated. How can we cut the cord in any one of these? So they have a lot of vulnerabilities, actually. They have a lot of vulnerabilities. Is it trips. So I'm going to finish by saying, because of this Magowitz classic, we have some very rapid translational now, and I want to just share two brief examples of the science. One is take advantage of the science as to why snakes don't have legs, and the other one is take advantage of the science of how zebrafish get their stripes. So the first one that you might see is there's a new science. I'm not sure who funded this. I'm sure the tournament didn't. Uh, why snakes don't have legs. Okay, but that's the hottest new thing. And it turns out that they don't have legs because there's a control of a program called super enhancers. Super enhancers are huge numbers of genes, and all those numbers of genes are controlled by a hierarchy. So if you could knock off or change that top gene set, it'll change the whole thing. So it's like a wound that doesn't heal, a leg that doesn't grow. So sure enough, they found here that if you inhibited that super enhancer, or you turned it back on, I should say, you turn it back on, snakes grow legs. Just what we need, right? So, that's, but if you keep it, if you turn it off, the snakes don't get legs. So we figured that uh, if you can stop limbs from growing on a snake, stop a really bad thing because we don't want snakes, venomous snakes walking around, that you ought to be able to stop the pancreas cancer from killing and invading the person. And sure enough, there are agents that stop the snake legs growing uh, and uh, would also do this, and it's paracalcitol. That's very high-dose synthetic vitamin D. There's other drugs. I've got them all listed here. And actually, not only that, is this interesting here, but it actually helps the immune system see the person's tumor. Now, every patient walks in and said, I want to get what Jimmy Carter got. It's an antibody. And now we're smart. One of those signals is these tumors are giving out do not eat me signals. These tumors are growing there for 21 years. And the ones who put out these do not eat me signals, those are the survivors. Our immune system would otherwise see them. There's nothing wrong with patients with cancer's immune system, basically. But they become used to having the tumor there because these signals keep going, do not eat me, do not eat me. These are miracle drugs in melanoma and lung. Look at the number, Hodgkin's disease, 100% of patients respond, kidney, head and neck, bladder. But only about 16 to 100%, but that's pretty good. But there's never been one ever work in patients with pancreas cancer, ever. You see it on Super Bowl, but they don't work against pancreas. It's driving us nuts. You see these anti-super enhancers actually are put together, and that's exactly what ERCUT is doing with the you know, 11, or sorry, 12 out of 14 patients now, is to try to change that environment using anti-super enhancers to get rid of those do not eat me signals. And we think it may be working. Now the second piece of science briefly is the zebrafish. And as you know, we're very lucky to have great lab folks that uh, Rogers interacted with. Pawan Noel, which we grabbed from the Mayo team, and Hyung Han. And there's a new technique called single cell RNA-seq. Now what we've been doing is taking a patient's tumor, taking it out, biopsy it, and then mash it up, and then measure things. Wouldn't it be great if we could just measure every individual cell? So you could actually do that now. And uh, uh, you know, this is the tumor cell. Got, we know that there's about 20 different types of cells, normal and tumor cells, in a patient's tumor. And believe it or not, it took the invention of this machine, which is a bunch of razor blades that spin around, that you can actually make single cells. This is, this is 
This, this machine costs $14,000 and saves huge amounts of work and is able to us to get single cells. And I think you can see over here, this has been impossible before to get single cells and you can put them through a sorter. You can tell every single tumor cell within a tumor. So here's a man, uh, you can see a 60 year old fella, had the, the surgery, you, got to see, you can see his biopsy. But here's what you get results. Look at this cube. You can tell every single component. You can see the tumor cells here. Uh, you can see the immune cells, the ones that are, uh, are not in there. There's very few of those. You see other fibroblasts. You see blood vessel cells. But you see that gray bunch up there? That's an unknown, really bad group of cancer cells, and it's called EMT. Those are the invading marauders. Those are the ones that all of a sudden turn on and will kill you quickly. This is the same thing that happens in breast cancer. The ducks are lined, normal, producing milk when they have a baby, and all of a sudden they start turning on a little bit more, and you get this ductal carcinoma in situ, right? And it gets angrier the more divisions, and then it becomes invasive, and that's a problem. So you can see that you'd like to be able to stop that invasion, and those gray cells, that's the invading group. So now we got them, we can study them. And what do you use for the model? By the way, these uh, mouse will cost you about $1.50 a day to keep. These cost 0.001 cent a day. But the question is, is how does zebrafish get their stripes? It goes from their notochord, right, spinal cord, and it invades down. They invade down. And that's how the zebrafish, these black cells, invade down and they give them stripes. So if you had something that stopped the invasion of the zebrafish uh, stripes, we could try that against these EMT cells. And sure enough, uh, Dr. David uh, Beers has developed an agent called TP0903. We have it in our phase one clinic right now that stops this epithelial to mesenchymal invasion. It's called EMT. And it's pretty remarkable, you can't see it very well here, but we want to add this on to our regimens as soon as we can, especially if you catch the disease a little earlier. So far, no toxicities from this drug, but this stops zebrafish actually from getting stripes. Well, finally, Roger, we certainly haven't forgotten the impact of early detection. I do want to emphasize though, you still are going to use therapy that works in advanced disease because that's how you're going to get the cures, but now it's got a new name. In 2017, the name now is cancer interception. This came from someone from Great Britain who plays a different kind of football, but she called it cancer interception. Liz Blackburn, Nobel Prize winner for telomeres. So this is the new name, and uh, your cancer interception team is here, uh, Urquhart and uh, a few other friends uh, here. Uh, and uh, I know uh, just you always ask, well, You've only done how many patients, ERCUT, so far? 130. About 130 families, and Roger's saying, is that all? But there's only one doctor. You see, that's, a <laughs> that's a pitch. I'm help, trying to help here. <laughs> but we do hear about each one of these families or patients, and they've got a really great group of people here who look at it from different ways to try to assess a person's risk. So it's early detection in, <clears throat> excuse me, in high-risk individuals. The team is working like crazy on these leads, urine, plasma, uh, all kinds. Of, we have grants in this area, skin microbiome. I remember last time, uh, I think the director of Batch's firm said, I make sure my daughter doesn't go out with somebody who has firmicutes, uh, but uh, bacteroidetes. But the skin microbiome is going to be very important for our, our, our immune system. And the newly discovered, just two months ago, uh, newly discovered by our Santa Cancer team is leukemia inhibitory factor. I think our team knows that this is a big find. Could be a very sensitive way to detect the early disease, but remember, even early breast cancer requires very intense therapy if you're going to get rid of all those tumor cells. So my colleagues and I here tonight and at home, thank you very much for the honor of working with you. Uh, so let's get busy on this final assault, and it's really so great, great to see so many survivors here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, folks.